and we're back for another lab here at Hobbs High School. Okay, we've been discussing photosynthesis and cellular respiration, so let's just review a couple of concepts to begin with here before we get too deeply into this lab, and I apologize for all of this. I don't have the high-tech setup that the doctor does on the periodic videos or some of the other people that I've seen do these things. So if you just bear with, we'll get through this. <clears throat> All right. In photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process where we're taking carbon dioxide, CO2, plus water, H2O, and in the presence of light, that's this bolt of energy here, light, L-I-G-H-T, we're going to get a sugar molecule and our basic sugar is C6H12O6 and we're going to get oxygen and generally speaking this is six carbon dioxides and six waters gives us this molecule and six oxygens at the end. This is photosynthesis. This is what plants are doing all day long when the sun is out. They're taking carbon dioxide out of the air, water out of the ground, and they're making a sugar and they're giving off this waste gas that we breathe called oxygen. And they do this all in the presence of light and utilizing chlorophyll in the chloroplasts. Okay. Now, respiration, which is what you and I do, is exactly the opposite. We're going to take our sugar, C6H12O6, plus, that's a six, plus six oxygens, and we're going to create carbon dioxide and water. And in the process, we're going to give off energy. We do this in the form of heat and our muscle movements that keeps all of our organs going. So, Later in the week, we're going to be looking at a photosynthesis lab, and there's one you can do. It's a virtual one online that many teachers have access to. It comes from Reading University. I believe it's in England. And we're going to be doing this respiration. This is called, this process here is cellular respiration. Okay, so we're going to be doing cellular respiration. And we're going to be using... Grapes, yeast, a Ziploc baggies, and we're going to be doing fermentation. There's two forms of fermentation, which is a form of cellular respiration. There's the alcoholic version, which is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using food, some kind of sugar, and we're going to be converting it to an ethanol and carbon dioxide gas. And then there's what's called lactic acid. If you're out exercising and you feel the burn in your muscles and you feel the burn in your lungs from working, that's the lactic acid because your muscles are needing to use energy faster than your body can make it, so they're just using it up out of your muscle tissue and the stored energy in your body. All right. So the purpose of this lab is to use yeast cells to demonstrate the process of anaerobic cellular respiration. Two forms of respiration, there's aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic means it requires oxygen, has to be done in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic it needs no oxygen, don't need it. As a matter of fact, we're going to show you that here in just a second. Yeast, though, what is yeast? Well, we know that bakers, people that make bread and stuff like that, they need yeast because the yeast, there's our yeast, our yeast is a catalyst. There's those yeasty things down in there. But I asked my classes today, what is yeast? Is it alive? Is it dead? What is it? Well, most of them knew that it was alive. But as to what it is, yeast is actually a fungus. Those of you that like to have your mushrooms, mushrooms are a fungus, yeast is a fungus. And the yeast cells, simple-celled organisms, they are alive. Yes, they are alive even in here. What they're going to do is they're going to take the sugars in the grapes and they're going to turn it into um, energy and they're going to give off carbon dioxide gas in the process. So now, how does this work? Well, we're going to take 
three grapes, we're going to get three Ziploc bags, we're going to mark them, and we're going to need, what does it say here, four pinches of yeast. So here we go. All right, so basically, in this lab, what we're going to do, I've already created a baggie. One of the baggies, we put the yeast in. Nothing else. This is a control to show you that the yeast is probably just going to sit there. Then I have two other baggies. I've got a baggie with yeast and a baggie without yeast. So, here we go. So I'm going to open the baggie with the yeast up. And I'm going to move my yeast over here. There it is. It says we need four pinches. One. Two. Three, four. Let's see if I can get. Hang on just a sec. Let's put that back in. Let's move this over. Excuse me while I'm working off camera for just a second. And then we're going to pour the yeasties back in. And seal that. And I can go put that back in the storeroom now. The rest of this will go off on the floor. Now, there's some people that they, they'll eat yeast cells during the day. Uh, they like the enzymes in the yeast. They think it helps in their digestion. I would not advise you to do that because just like eating raw cookie dough, it could all blow up on you and that would be very painful. All right, so there's my baggie with the yeast in it. I now need three grapes. Cue the grapes. Here we go. These were probably out in the field about three weeks ago, if not a little less. They're picked. They're packaged, washed and packaged. Truck to the warehouse, truck to the warehouse for the grocery store, and then sent to your local grocery store, and then you get to eat them. Okay, so we're going to put three grapes in. So there's our three grapes inside there. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure this yeast gets wet. And so I'm going to crush these grapes in my fingers, just like this. I'm going to get the yeast wet with the sugars. We're going to expose them to all these great sugar glucose molecules coming out of the grapes, just like that. And then I'm going to get that down and even on the bottom. And I'm going to roll this, just like this. We're going to push as much air out as we can. And, oops, there we go. And then I'm going to run my finger across, and I now have this ready to go. So there is our control, just like that. Okay, now the no yeast, same thing, except I don't put any yeast in it this time. Get that yeast out of the way. Wipe my hands off so I don't accidentally put any yeast cells in there with the grapes or else our no yeast will not work the way it's supposed to. Okay, so I'm going to take a grape. Grape, I'm doing this off camera, but you can see the shadow there. There's the grapes right there. We're going to put three grapes in. Okay, now seal that back up, very good. And we're going to crush these also. So here we go. Going to crush them up, just like we did in the other one. Make sure they're all nice and crushed down. Now, in some other classes, there were some issues with students banging with books and hammers and mallets and ruining the bags and everything. We're just going to do that. And then we're going to roll this, just like we did before. And we're going to seal it. Now, for the students in class and for this particular set of baggies, these are going to set for 24 hours. But I don't have to do a part two. I can actually show you what our results are going to be. So if you will come with me. Here's our classroom. And over here are the experiments that we've already been working on. So let's just take a look here at some of the stuff that's already happened in class. So we have a baggie that's our baggie without. This happened to be from fourth period. I won't show you the student's name on here, but this is a baggie from fourth period. My fourth period happens 
around 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. As you can see, this baggie has expanded. Oh my gosh. Now, from sixth period, or fifth period, we're getting bubbles, gas bubbles in there, but it hasn't blown up. Although, if I come over here, third period has gotten bigger. Second period has gotten bigger. Now, first period, for some reason, there's a lot of bubbles going on in here, but we're not seeing a lot of trapped gas. I don't know if we've got a hole. Nope, that's sealed. But it, it's not flat anymore, and there is gas in there, but we're just not getting a lot. And so I did this by rows. Each row gets a baggie, or each row gets two baggies, one with and one without, and then we just set them down. And as you can see, as we just survey around here, as you survey down the baggies, you can see that several of these baggies are setting up. This particular one in row two from second period, I might have to burp him before I go home. This one from first period, very high, but again, some of the others, not so much. Now, part of our laboratory asked the question, what could be a source of errors on here? Well, one of them could be different grapes with different sugar contents. Could be that the baggie has a hole in it and is allowing the gas to escape. Could be that the students didn't crush the grapes all that much. Okay, there's several things that could be going on in here. Could be the yeast that particular time that I used. We don't know what's happening. So, there is the experiment. And what we're wanting to see in the end is we want to see the baggies expand. Because this was rolled just as flat as what we rolled it. Okay, here's one from my last period just before I came here. This one's starting to expand, but it's pretty flat. Because this has expanded, this is proving that yeast is alive, yeast is respiring, yeast is giving off carbon dioxide gas. So, that is the point of this lab. So let me just review some questions with you that show up on our lab. Okay, so the hypothesis. On this particular one, the hypothesis is that with, with the yeast, We'll see the baggies expand. We'll see respiration being uh, uh, done by the yeast cells. Without, we will not see any reaction. Now, just to say though, if I were to leave this without the yeast for a week or so, I would probably see this expand just naturally. But yeast, remember, is a catalyst, and the catalyst speeds up the reaction. So our observations, we have observations from day one, day two. We talked about source of errors. What could go wrong? You know, in this one, I didn't quite use as much yeast as the others did. So that may be a source of an error in this particular one. Did we crush the grapes? Did we seal the bag? Does the bag have a hole in it? Um, are some of the grapes juicier than other grapes? Okay. Um, sugar content between the grapes. Some may have more sugar than the others. That could be exp explaining what's going on. So then we can do an analysis. We answer the questions of what is aerobic cellular respiration? It has to have oxygen. What is anaerobic respiration? It, it can be done without oxygen or it's done in the, without the presence of oxygen. What is alcoholic fermentation? That's where we create an ethanol molecule, which is the alcohol, okay? That's the one with the yeast here. And then um, we also get the carbon dioxide. Uh, oh, and by the way, on these, you will not be able to drink that and get drunk the next day. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Uh, wine making, beer making, alcohol making is a process that takes time. So, this is not something unless you're going to be very patient, are you going to be rewarded for it. Okay, explain the results that we obtained. Well, as we have already seen, we're obtaining very good results. Many bags are expanding, and then the ones without yeast are not. What is the evidence in the lab which shows that the yeast cells are a living organism? It's the fact that the bags expanded and became larger and expanded with the carbon dioxide gas after we had pushed out all of the air that was in the bag before we sealed it. So, 
This is a fermentation mini lab. This fermentation mini lab, I got it from another teacher. I don't know if this is available online, but I'm sure you can uh, Google fermentation yeast cells mini lab and you should be able to get something very, very close to this. And I want to thank everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Till next time.